Hello everyone to the Boxing Breakdown podcast. I'm here with my co-host Joe Willett. Hello. We've got a very special guest today in a professional boxer, Nathan Haney. How are you? I'm very good, thank you lots of you. Very good. I'm very happy to get him on the, this podcast, only our third pod. So yeah, we've got a few questions lined up like we always do. And we'll start firing away and we'll get his answer. So let's go. Nice one. First of all, we've got your we've got a first question. How do you feel about your victory over Ryan Oliver? Yeah, so I was happy with it, to be fair. There's things I needed to work on. I was a bit critical in my performance at the time. But on reflection, like I've been, I haven't boxed for a year. I was on the TV for my Queen's Me debut. Um, yeah. And I had no crowd. Where normally I've got over like 1,200 people who can watch me fight. So it was in silence. And, and if you add all them things together, I don't think the performance was too bad. Yeah, I thought it was a decent performance and I, I do think you will do better with crowds. I thought you worked really well behind the jab and you let your right hand go. I thought in the first round you might have got him out of there, actually. You started really fast. Yeah, Any yeah. reason behind that? Well, well, the reason was I threw one jab. The first shot I threw was a jab and it landed dead clean and I thought, right, let's go. So, so as soon as I hit that clean, I was like, right. I just went into, I just went into like... All out attack mode. Oh, no, not to start. I wanted. <laughs> and to be, to be fair, I thought to myself, I was going to get him out of there, but he was very tough, very tough lad. He did seem like a very tough lad, and I felt he kept his hands up well, and he did throw when he had to. Uh, I can't remember which round, but it looked like he had you hurt a little bit. Were you all right then, or was it just a little bit of a wobble? Yeah, no, no it wasn't even because Deb Sarney said that afterwards. What it was, there was a shot that hit me, and because he hit me, and I, I dipped my head down to avoid the following shots. I didn't. I didn't dip through um, being hurt or or dazed or anything. Literally, I, I literally the shot hit me, so I moved. I ducked down, anticipating oh, yeah. another one. But on camera, that obviously looks like I, I, I dipped, but I really, I really didn't, mate. I wasn't hurt at all. But he obviously thought that I was hurt, and that's why he started trying to come on, coming on to me. And that's when I dropped him. But um, but no, I was there. I was never. In the fight, if I was if I've ever been here, I've admitted it. Like in when I boxed Surgeon Bomber, he bloody rung me ball all over the place, and and that I was here in that fight. But but no, I mean there's there's no point in that fight where I was I was here at all. The camera, because you did dip. I didn't know if you were hurt or you were trying to move away. Yeah, if you watch it again, it's literally just if you get punched, the the first thing you should do is move out the line of the shot that where where it's just of come course. from. He hit me with the left hook, and I've, I'm anticipating the right hand's going to come over the top. So I'm di- I've dipped down straight away in the anticipation of that. But obviously, from the camera angle and that, it probably made like I did dip, but no, not in the slightest bit. Exactly, because if uh, you did yeah. hook, you, you don't want to get caught with that back hand, and then that will uh, that might have stunned you. So, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, next question: What was it like having your first fight under Frank Warren? Yeah, we. It wasn't me. It was me. Um, it was my first fight for Queensby Promotions. Obviously, I'm I'm, I'm eleven to zero now, so mm-hmm. I've had eleven fights, eleven wins. But but yeah, it was great, mate. It was um, it's always been a dream of mine to fight for Frank Warren growing up as an amateur. So to finally do that was um, yeah, it was a proud moment, mate. Very good. Next one is what was it like without your crowd? Because I feel like you do work well off your crowd. And what was it like fighting in like COVID times? Yeah, it just wasn't as enjoyable, mate. So, like, there's nothing better than when you walk out to Delilah. You've probably seen the video yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how I found out. Yeah, yeah but about where you are, basically. it's just it's incredible, like the noise, yeah. atmosphere, and like for example, in the fights when I was letting them shots go, and when I dropped him, the place would have erupted. The noise would have yeah. been real, but obviously I didn't have that. So it was um, it just wasn't enjoyable. I knew I still get the job done. Because I've got a job. I'm, I'm a professional fighter, so that's that's my job. Some some fighters haven't responded well to having no crowd, but but I think I dealt really well. Yeah, I thought you really did, and I thought you still look good, and you enjoy coming out, and you just try to make the most of like almost a bad situation, which is the best you could do. Yeah, absolutely. It's like with Delilah as well. Mm-hmm. I, I, actually, on TV, I actually looked quite good. I didn't I didn't know I was going to look at home because I was singing. And everyone, yeah. everyone could hear every single word I was singing in the arena. I was thinking, "Oh my goodness, this might sound terrible at home." But fortunately, you couldn't see me, and it looked mint. So, yeah, it was good. I think it really did go well because, uh, as you said after the fight, you said you were worried how you looked, but you looked—it just made you look even better. 
Yeah, and as if no. you're like, we're looking forward to getting crowds back and everyone's looking forward to that. Yeah, I mean, you've got to commit to it, mate. It's one of them. If I'd, if I'd have been half arsed when I watched um, Josh Warrington walk out, his is tough mm-hmm. because his is all the crowd. There's not really much from him, really. Like, with my walkouts, it's all my crowd, but also I, I, I'm I, entertained at the same time, if you know what I mean. So I still, yeah. I, I still have to commit to it and just... He looked quite awkward when he did walk, his walkouts. I thought to myself, there's no way I'm going to go out there looking awkward. I just need to make it look like it is every single time I walk out. So I think he managed to do that. Yeah, I thought he'd done a good job at that, actually. I think, I, think, I think it gave you, it made you look a bit more confident as it, and it looked really well for you. Yeah. I thought he looked a little bit awkward now. I wasn't, I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's, um, I think he was nervous, but, but, he, but he's a very good fighter, actually. Yeah, very hard fighter. Got another one. Uh, what's next in your career? Where do you, where do you look at going next? Well, I think um, I think BT Sport and Queensby Promotions are looking to come to Stoke to put a big spot over here. So I think that's the next step now is in terms of getting those guys over here just so we can put a massive show on in Stoke. And then, and then who knows after that, mate? We'll just keep working away at the rankings, see what titles become available and fight for them. Yeah, because I think you're looking when the you'd like to fight when crowds are back and you're getting your well deserved break. Yeah, so absolutely. yeah. Um, was there a reason? I, I think I'm right. You fought at super middle, didn't you? And you normally fight at middleweight. Uh, no, 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 yeah, no, no, it wasn't super middle, but I, I weighed in eleven seven five, which is middleweight. Mm-hmm. Just ah. on TV for some reason, they had it down as a super middleweight contest, but it wasn't. Like Ryan Oliver Lee weighed in eleven six. I weighed, which is the middleweight limit, and I weighed mm-hmm. in eleven five, so which is under the middleweight limit. So, um, yeah, no, it's, I'm a middleweight mate. It was just I don't know why they put it super middle. Yeah, I was thinking that because I, I I thought it was eleven six, and you both weighed in the middle. Yeah, 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 just just everyone put that down. I was just very curious about that. Um, who's the hardest fight you've ever sparred with? Yep, yeah, Liam Williams. Liam Williams is the best I've ever sparred. Cracking fighter, very yeah. good fighter. Amazing, mate. amazing, very strong. Joe, Joe, would you like to get a question in? Um, um, with all the um, before you were saying that you thought he was a bit nervous. Um, a question I was wondering. Um, did would you say you ever feel any nerves before going in? Oh, of course, mate. For the health, for the yeah. two weeks before the fight, two or three weeks before, all you think is um. You just get the adrenaline rushes from thinking about the fights in terms of what you're doing. You get yeah. that sort of flying mode where your body, even though you're not actually fighting, your body thinks you are fighting. So, like, even when you just imagine a certain aspect of the fights, your adrenaline starts going. So, the, the nerves happen yeah. the whole time. And then, and then even beforehand, it's, it's nervous when you're waiting in the hotel, particularly with COVID, because you're on your own and you can just think all day and body three hours feels like 10. So, it, um, yeah. But, but but for me, it's one of them when like Delilah kicks in, just it all yeah. disappears and because you're in, you're in fire mode, you're in show showtime mode, and it's just you just switch on. Yeah, I thought that looked a nightmare as well, waiting for the COVID test. Oh, yeah, it was yeah, I had to wait in the room for like twelve hours, and then not only that, you sort of you got the you got the worry about you failing the test, but also you got the the worry about your opponent failing the test. Because if anything yeah. fairly, like the cut man, the corner man, the fights off, and then obviously Leon Woodstock, he failed, so he was neg- he was positive. So the the main event was down, which essentially could have completely ruined the show because the, they were potentially going to pull the show. But fortunately, yeah. he, he let it go on, which is good. Yeah, it must have been um, extremely difficult with because obviously the weight, and, but you just got to get used to it, haven't you? That's it, mate. Just got to crack on, mate. It's, it is very good. like anything. Exactly. Go on, Joe. You can get another question. Hang on. I'm just going up them. Get them loaded up. Yeah. Well, it would help if it would let me have a look at them. I've got them saved in the thing and it's... <laughs> Phone's being glitchy. Do you just want me to go for the next question? Yeah, go on. I'm fine. fine. Absolutely fine. What's, what's been your hardest fight out of all 11? Um, hardest fight? Um... <sighs> Trying to think of the the oldest fights. Um, I probably I'd say the most challenging one in terms of coming through different aspects was the my seventh fight, which is was for the Midlands area title, where I fought Tom Stokes, who was a ten and one fighter at the time. Um, yeah, did, did, I had some stuff in the in the lead up to that fight that was quite stressful. Um, so 
I had to overcome those kind of things. And then in the fight itself, I got caught with a couple of shots, had to recover, had to change my game plan to, to suit it. But but I come out on top and I, and I, won, it, and I won it comfortably in the end. But, but yeah, I'd say that's probably my tough one. But all the fights I've had, other than the ones that I've knocked out, um, they've all had their own particular challenges. So they've all been good. Yeah, yeah, Tom Stokes, he was 11 and 2 when he fought him. It was in Stokes, it was yeah, yeah. for the Midlands area title. Yeah. So he seems he seemed like he had an all right resume as well. Yeah, yeah. Especially for your seventh fight. Yeah, that's it, mate. We're just moving through. It makes him like it's one of them. Um, you want to you want to have good fights, but at the same time, um, you, you want to progress as well. So. Yeah, you've got to take them journeymen first and work your way up, and that's a very good. That was a very good fight. It must have been a good learning curve. Oh, absolutely, mate, absolutely. Right, next one. What's the most difficult? What's the most challenging part about being a boxer? Um, the most challenging part, I'd probably say. Uh, I don't know, man. They keep it to so many different things because I enjoy training, but obviously you got to be you got to be dedicated. Um, mm-hmm. But but I say. Like as a professional fighter, it's obviously the most difficult thing is making yourself unique to everybody else. Because at the end of the day, um, promoters want you to be a commodity to them in terms of selling tickets and so on. And I think it's very hard for some people to to stand out um, compared yeah. to other fighters. I think I'm very fortunate that um, I've got like a great walk on, and that makes me unique to a hell of a lot of fighters. So I've got my own unique selling point there. But I think for other fighters, it's very hard to sort of create a niche in terms of why do people want to watch that one guy do you know what I mean whereas um, yeah and I, I think that's probably the most that's probably the difficult thing as a professional how do you keep how do you keep people entertained and how do you keep people wanting to come watch your fights and I'm, I'm like I say I'm very fortunate that my following has just grown and grown and grown and the support has grown and grown and grown so I think I've got that down to a certain aspect but I think for the rest of them they're uh, that that's probably their toughest thing yeah. yeah, I think you've got a really good like thing about you. You really do stand out. You're very easy to... I didn't know much about you until I found out about this fight. I looked you up, and you're just so easy to like understand. You've got your big crowd, and that gives you a really good niche, and that's really helpful for you. Absolutely, mate, absolutely. And that, that, like, say, like you say, about in terms of understanding the stuff, some fighters are very hard to speak to. They're very introverted. That's probably in, in the sport in the first place. It's, it's an individual sport. It's not like a team sport. So they're very in, in some fighters are introverted, hard to speak to. They don't really raise a profile that well, um, and because the training and all that, we all love training. We all love the discipline. Yeah, the food and not eating certain foods can be hard, but that's just part of the game. But I think it's the things that make people really uncomfortable that they don't like. Yeah, um, yeah. on about the fans, what was it like when you realised you were starting to get a good fan base going? It just uh, for me, I didn't realise it until that Tom Stokes Midlands title fight. Up until that, yeah. probably like between 80 to 120 people that were coming to watch me fight, which is pretty... That's a promoter when you're on the small hall scene. If you sell 100 tickets, they're very happy. So I was I was making my promoters happy. But then for that that Midlands area title fight, there was about 330 that went for that one. So that started growing and the noise went a bit more. But then as a result of that, because the atmosphere was so good and, and obviously I won, it sort of snowballed after that. So then there was like 400 odd that come to my next fight. Then we went to BC Sport in, arena, in the Arena Birmingham and there was 400 people that went and travelled away from Stoke to Birmingham to watch me. Then after that, then it just completely snowballed and there was like, like say, there was 1,300 at the last event. So it was, um, yeah, it's been going really, really, really good. And I think, it, well, I know it's only going to get bigger. Yeah. That is absolutely brilliant, the way you've just grown and grown and grown. Like I say, you're just so easy to like connect with. You've got a brilliant social media and you really let people in. And you were talking about fighters being introverted and what they're like. Just when we planned this, we were unsure how you'd be, but you're the, like, the easiest person in the world to talk to. <laughs> and you're just like a normal guy, which is what you want, isn't well, it? Yeah, well, and that's how well, you get good, good growing. Well, I think, to be honest, mate, pe- people ask me why I do well. And most of the time, I haven't got a clue. Um, I like, but but I think that is a big part of it as well. People know that I'm just myself. Do you know what I mean? I'm very approachable. Like it's not like I've got I'm I'm, I'm stuck up my own arse. Like do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And and I do mm-hmm. because I, I do want to represent my city of Stoke on Trent. So it's um yeah. There's a lot of things that go into it, but if people know that you're genuinely, if you're genuine and you've got a genuine um, passion for stuff, people back you. I think. 
Yeah. Yeah, you seem like a very genuine bloke, and that makes you very easy to approach. And that's always good when you're a fighter. We've got we've got a kind of few more questions. Right, go on. We've got one. What's your opinion on these YouTubers boxing? I've got to be honest, mate. I don't even want to speak about it. So that that <laughs> that that'll, that'll say as much as you need to know from me. That's a perfect answer because it's yeah. just stupid. It's, 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 it's what it is, mate. They just it. <laughs> They get that that lad's fit that is baiting all the fighters. Like Tommy Fury, he hasn't got the slightest interest in fighting Tommy Fury. But all he's done is he caused a bit of a stir, and he, now he's got a load of followers that were advertising. Uh, there were Tommy Furies. That's all he's doing it for. It's to cause controversy, and I just can't stand it. Absolutely brilliant answer, and I'm very happy you answered like that. We've got some ones about the boxing coming up. We've got uh, a super middleweight. Could could we have your opinion on Billy Joe Saunders versus Canelo and how you see that pan now? Um, well, I've seen, like I say, Liam Williams is the best person I've ever sparred. And he speaks, yeah. about, he speaks about Billy Joe Saunders like I speak about Liam Williams in terms of Liam Williams thinks that Billy Joe Saunders is one of the most slippery, awkward people you'll ever box. Now, if he thinks that, Billy Joe Saunders must be on their next level. But Canelo is also the best in the world. And I can't believe it feels like he's fighting every two minutes. Um, I'll, I'll rank yeah. him. But you, you would have to say Canelo just for the fact that it's Canelo. But yeah. I think Billy Joe Saunders could certainly offer something that Canelo hasn't fought for a very long time. And when he has fought awkward people like Laura, who was a Southpaw and quite tricky, he potentially could, should have lost that maybe. But um, so, yeah, very interesting. I think Billy Joe Saunders, if there's someone that could beat him, I think he probably could be that man. Yeah, because obviously he's got extremely brilliant boxing ability, and he, if he can stay away, but it's all a question if he can stay away from Canelo and out boxing. But that's always the problem. He's he's just so good at work and the body, and he can just knock you down and you're hurt. And then, but if there is a man I think who can beat Canelo at the minute, I think he's he's got the best chance person. Absolutely. Right. You got any more? Have you got some questions, Joe? Um. I've just, I've just, I'm looking at um what we had already noted down, um mm-hmm. what, but one of just thought there what would I mean obviously, you might have a bit of not I wouldn't say biasy but you might prefer certain divisions and stuff but what would you say at the minute is the best division in boxing and that you enjoy watching the most or um, I guess fighting in the most. Um, well, obviously I'm a middleweight, so I think the middle, I think domestically the middleweight division is quite nice. I can say, yeah, Denzel Bentley is a British champion. You got Felix Cash, Jack Cullen, you got uh, you got uh, Mark Heffron, Liam Smith. I think it's a, I think that's a right good uh, division. But obviously, like it, you look at like uh, Josh Taylor's weight and stuff. There's um, great fighters in that division, um, and I think it is is one of the best ones. Yeah, there's a lot of good weights at the minute in boxing. Um, in my opinion, I'm I'm a big fan of the middleweight division. You've obviously got your Golovkins, Chris Eubank Juniors, yeah. but I think the middleweight division, at the, uh, not the middleweight, the welterweight division is looking really good at the minute. Yeah, well, is that with Javante Davis and all that? Uh, that's the one with like Crawford, yeah. Spence, yeah. Yeah, 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 very, very good. Yeah, very good. Go on, Joe. We'll have another question off you. Off me. Um. Mm-hmm. Well, this is another one I've got written down. Um, White Povetkin, who do, who do you back for that one? Um, if you you you'd have to back like the the man that knocked him out already. Uh, you'd have to yeah, yeah. For Povetkin, just because technically he's just very very good. And why yeah. very good? But then again, why can knock him out? Why can knock him out? Who, who knows? That's still that's the beauty of heavyweight boxing. But for me, just the upcut they they laid on him last time was just beautiful. So. I can't yeah. see why I can't do the exact same again. Yeah, it's it's really nice to talk to an actual professional boxer about professional boxing because you obviously know quite a lot. It was a very white started well, but it was an unbelievable uppercut off um, Povetkin. He worked it well. He kept with the left hook and then he changed up and he caught him with the uppercut, which I thought was a brilliant punch, and it laid him out. But it's a, it's a fight we do all look forward oh, to. Yeah, Go on, Joe, you can keep asking the questions because I ask Kenny Few. Nice. Um, I, again, I've got another prediction one. Um, I think I've missed one. Of, anyway, AJ or Fury, the big 
the big talking point at the minute. Yeah, it, for me, I've always said Fury just for the fact that I think yeah. if Fury does the right things, I think he boxes everyone's head off. It, that it, yeah. for the movement speed that he's got, working well in chat. But but the equaliser is AJ is very good at what he does, um, and he can yeah. bang as well. So if he lays it on Fury, Fury could be in trouble. But it's just it's a, that's why the fight's so great because it's two big guys against each other. So, but yeah. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd edge it towards Fury. Yeah, I'm basically the exact same as that, actually. Um, I think I think if we're going to... It's all right if we just stay on this topic for a little bit longer, Joe. I think it could, it's a good fight, and it's obviously a very good British fight that, that we've got the titles at the minute. Yeah. I think if Fury can, if it does become a boxing match, I think Fury's got it, but that's depending if AJ and make it difficult, but they're both absolutely brilliant boxers and should be an absolute class fight and that's something we all look forward to in the boxing world. Absolutely. Let's go on, Joe. Uh, we've, got a, can it, we've got a couple more, haven't we? Yeah. Who was your... Who who was the, say, the like, fighter you looked up to when you were growing up? And Yeah, so, so, so growing up, uh, for me, the main one was Joe Calzaghi. That was the main one looking at, uh, that I was looking at. Obviously, he's a southpaw. I'm not a southpaw. But the, the fast shots that he threw, and obviously yeah. me being the young age I was at the time, he was like the main one. So Joe Calzaghi. And then as he, as I got a bit older and stuff, I started looking more towards Golovkin. And then yeah. and then I, I realised that a lot of stuff that Golovkin's got is from Julio Cesar Cervez Sr. So he's another one I've been looking at. And, he, they, they, and then obviously Lomachenko is all I can see of what he can do. Th- those guys are sort of my idols when it comes to boxing. Nice one. Some very good idols, Joe Calzaghi, an absolute brilliant boxer. Obviously, I wasn't old enough to watch him, but I've seen enough fights of him on the highlights, and he, he was just so impressive with yeah. incredible punch speed. So, yeah, very good answer. Go on, Joe. You've got a couple more, I think. Um, do I? <laughs> no, I thought you did. Go on. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to look through the things Things now. You asked one if you've got plenty. I'm just... Five DMs. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we had all the messages... So, are you always going to be a middleweight? Have you got any chance of moving up just just in the future? Or do, you, do you think middleweight is your perfect? Yeah, middleweight is the way it makes it. I'll make it reasonably comfortably. Um, in fact, yeah. last time was the, the easiest I've ever made that weight. I've never made the weight that easy before. And I don't know whether it's because potentially I may have lost a little bit of muscle mass during the restrictions because I'm not able to go into the gym and do as much strength training as normal. That potentially could be the case. So I think what I'll do over the coming months is just get a little bit bigger, just so I'm bigger at middleweight. Um, yeah. I need it to be a little bit tougher to make that weight. So if I'm making it easy, that means I'm obviously not that big that weight, but I am big. If you look on the TV and stuff, I'm still quite a bit, quite a big middleweight. But yeah, but yeah middleweight's my division weight. I can't really see me ever stepping up. Yeah, I thought I thought you looked in quite good shape, and you did make the weight, as you say, very comfortably, even one pound yeah. under. And I thought it was overall a good. What did you think of the fight night overall? Because, like, of the wins in the like Tommy Fury's fight and the fights above you, what did you well, think? I, of that I, night I've got my own space. I didn't get to see him um, because of the COVID stuff. Like, you, you know? went in there, you went in the change room, you got wraps up, mm-hmm. you boxed. As soon as you got the interview, you were you were basically kicked out, and you had to go back to the hotel. So I didn't even. Yeah, oh. I haven't watched them back either, so I can't really comment too much. Oh, fair enough. I just wondered because, again, that's another topic. It must be like we said; it's difficult in COVID times, and you just you got to go straight back to your yeah, hotel. Yeah, rubbish, mate. It was him. Wasn't it's one of them? It's quite a forgetful night in terms of you don't really. I didn't get to see, meet Josh Taylor, which is got in, but I did meet my, Dennis McCann, who's a cracking fighter and a lovely lad. So I met Dennis McCann, who's a top kid. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, other than that, mate, straight back in the hotel. It was just like it was over and done with before I could even blink. Another question: Before the fight, did you just get there? At what time did you yeah, get there? Yeah. Did, did you have to wait there, or did you get there and then? Yeah. Fight so what? basically, what happened was we had to leave the hotel at seven. You had the taxi pickers up individually um, for a set time. Arrived at the venue, um, and then by the time everything was sorted with the checks and all this kind of stuff, it was half past seven. I was in the change room. Then you start getting wraps up. Now, wraps normally take about half an hour just to do the wraps. Um, but I was mm-hmm. about quarter to eight. They said, you're on at five past eight. Which is crazy. I expected yeah. to be on at half past eight. So then literally, we had mm-hmm. to chuck the wrap on, 
hot, did hardly any pads, so the warm up was terrible. And then yeah, straight out, it was mad. Yeah, because obviously I felt the first few rounds because you didn't get a warm up. I wasn't sure if you did or not, but I felt you were just trying to warm in the fight and get yourself around and just dust off a bit of ring rush because you hadn't fought. Yeah, exactly, year, exactly. So. Mate. And to be honest with, with me, I tried to, I did try to stop him in the last round. And even and if he had, and if the balance had saved him when I dropped him in the fifth, I would have stopped him then as well. But yeah. it's one of them. It was. I'm good. I'm glad I got the rounds. I was, I've got another ten rounds under my belt. So that's what. That, in, yeah. I thought it was. I thought it was a really good ten rounds as well. I thought you looked in pr- every round. You looked very comfortable and you boxed extremely well. And I thought you worked off the jab incredibly. Threw the right hand at the right time. I was. If there was another thirty seconds in that fourth, I don't think you would survive. Yeah, I thought you were very close. Yeah, I thought you were very close, and obviously the bell went. I could see you were trying to get him out there in the last, but obviously, as you say, ten rounds is all. I'll be yeah. honest with you, sir. I thought you, I thought you were going to take him out in one. Yeah, I, I thought so as well. Like you said, he caught him with a really nice jab, John. He just thought he'll go for it, and then. Obviously, the lad, the lad did seem really tough and took a lot of punishment, but he he never shied yeah, away from it. I thought not at all. Very good, very good. Right, obviously, you're a Stoke fan, so is it all right if you talk about Absolutely, that? Absolutely, mate. All right. So, thoughts on your season as, as Stoke? Fan? <laughs> it, it was amazing at the start. It was unreal. Like, continuing last season mm-hmm. at Christmas and stuff, we were rock bottom, and all the way through the season, the, the, that threat of relegation was really genuine. Um, so when Michael O'Neill come in, um, we, had a great, we had a great start to the season and it was just looking mint. We needed playoffs. Well, in fact, we were second at one point. And then, but then all that mm-hmm. happened is Tyrese Campbell got injured. I think Nick Powell got injured. So, so some some key players, even Fletcher got injured as well, one of our other strikers. And he, uh, the mm-hmm. wins went straight over sale. So now we're currently, I think, 12th or 10th, uh, 11th or 12th, something like that. 10 points on the playoffs, but, mm-hmm. but we're safe. It's just one of them now. Maybe maybe you should just give the youngsters a bit of everyone else and save some of the old dogs. Yeah, because we're Middlesbrough fans, and obviously we were, we're in the round. You were only two players to pull. And he started really well, and that Tyrese Campbell is yeah. a brilliant player. He was he was like six goals and five assists in like 15 games. He got in. I heard he got injured, and he's yeah. out for the season. And I felt like your form took a dip. You hadn't won in like 11. You've won your last two. But when we played, you, you were a really good team and you were good, very physically yeah. strong. And I think this season you'll be mid-table and then next season you can push on because Mike Law O'Neill. Because last season you were... Oh, maybe, maybe, one maybe, point maybe, maybe we were going down last season. But then, look, like, fortunately, O'Neill saw this out. So, yeah, for, for, like, the, the, you're going to get Stokies that are going to moan about the performances. And the performances aren't great, but but... It is what it is, mate. I'd say I prefer what we've got now and then Bill Lane next season. Yeah, because you um, had Nathan Jones. He wasn't really yeah. performing. Like like us, we took on Jonathan Woodgate. Now we've got an experienced manager in Neil Warnock. And that's what I think you need Absolutely. in this division. And just to be safe and pushing up there is just all you want, yeah, really, isn't it? Mate. Yeah, good. Joe, have you got any more questions? I'm out. I'm fully out. out. All right, fair enough. So, call us and enter the podcast. Thank you so much. More than welcome, boys. More genuine boxer ever. Uh, So, everyone, thank you for watching this podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.